everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Tiny Epic Zombies by Game Moon Games. I'm back, and in this video, I'm going to be painting the the items for those item meeples. If you've not seen the game, it's one of Tiny Epic series, tiny little guys, little meeples, item meeples. They can hold these items that are in the game, and it's those items I'm just going to add a splash of color to, make the game look a little bit more interesting. So as I mentioned in my unboxing, I didn't really have anything to hold it, but I've got this PC tool that I'm going to use it's sort of like a reverse kind of pair of tweezers, a tri-tweezer, I don't know. But it does grip the little handle enough for me to paint. But S666SKS, that is a, that's a username and a half, recommended or suggested these bamboo sticks with crocodile clips on the end. And I thought that is absolutely fantastic. I've ordered some of those. Do check those out if you're interested in painting these parts because it's painful. This took me a long time to paint, but only because I could only do one at a time and I had to wait for it to dry in between every coat. I'm going to start with the chainsaw, hot orange, Vallejo's game color. Not primed any of these. I'm going to use game color to prime them because it's supposed to work as a primer at the same time, and I'm finding it does. And after that, so I primed the whole thing in that orange. I'm going to use Claymore, no machine gun metal, the darker silver by Army Painter. Basically going to use Vallejo as the base, 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 primer, base coat for everything to give use that game color so it sticks to the model. And then I'll probably use my army painters because I prefer a lot of those colors. Speaking of which, dead black. That's going to be for the, what do you call that bit? The chain. Yeah, the chain bit. It looks so sharp on this model. So I'm going to do that in black and I'm going to be doing the handle in black. And then there's the like, toggle switch on the, the body of the chain. So that's black. That's going to be... It, it done <laughs> like that is it these are all going to be really really quick each it's, as i met it's just me waiting for the paints to dry that's the only reason this took me a while to do because i could only do one at a time i had to sit and hold them while they dried make sure i wasn't just taking the paint off resting it on the side that sort of thing so it was clunky but as i mentioned those crocodile clips on bamboo sticks stuck to a bit of blue tack that'll probably do it paint them all at the same time I'm going to use, go on to highlighting. I'm going to use Vallejo's Orange Fire. It's just a step up from that hot orange. And I'm just going to edge highlight really around the base, the, the body of that chainsaw, just around all the corners. I'm going to use Claymore Blade just to sort of kind of dry brush along the metallic parts of that. And the Necromancer Cloak, really, really dark gray. And that's just to do, again, sort of like just dry brushing edge highlighting along all the black bits. And that's going to look realistic enough for a sort of 2D. <laughs> it's 3D, 2D. It's weird, isn't it? Like, would you still call that 3D? It's quite flat, isn't it? But that's that's plenty enough. I think that's enough detail for these sorts of models. Scophilus Brown. Again, Vallejo's game color. Just going to base coat this fire axe in that. Then I'm going to use their gory red. Abomination gore would have been fine. Corn red by Citadel. Whichever, just a brightish red. And that's going to be for the blade of the the axe and then i'm going to use a dry brush just a big flat one that i've got claymore blade very very little paint on it and i'm going to dry brush from the, the sharp part of the axe across it so it's going to really really silver up the cutting part of the axe but it's also going to scrape along the red as well and make it look quite realistic and then i'm going to use bronze flesh tone that's just a sort of highlight step up that scrofulous brown and again it's just edge highlighting along the handle of that axe and it's just going to make it look a, a splash realistic really 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 liked how that red metal came out on there and i hope i get some models in the future that's got a similar similar effect so i can do that more leather brown by vallejo just trying to match the artwork on the cards i've got all the cards laid out so you can sort of see that as i'm doing it i'm going to use their white primer on the wrap around this baseball bat looks a lot like um lucille doesn't it this this one I think a bit of barbed wire wrapped around it as well. Speaker of which, just going to dry brush some Claymore blade across all of that barbed wire and give that a little, little bit of colour. This is the first of the items I'm going to use some wash with. I was basically just trying to avoid it to speed up the drying time for the video. But a little bit of zombie shade of that sort of light brown. Just going to apply that all over and then have to sit and wait forever because that takes a long time to dry. I'm going to use Vallejo's leather brown just to bring back in that base colour of the baseball bat along the tip of the baseball bat and the sides of the baseball bat white primer to do exactly the same on that wrap trying to leave the shade in between each segment of the wrap to make that look nice and realistic and then just dry brushing on using my fine detail my insane detail brush by the army painter here i'm using that for a lot of this actually just dry brushing on that claymore blade back onto the the barbed wire just making that look as realistic as i can again and 
this is actually for once I've played this game unbelievably I have played it that's primarily why I wanted to paint it for I'm going to play this game uh, so I'm going to paint it first and I have played it and I like it I'm not a massive fan of solo games and I played it solo and then I played it the next day which makes me think I really liked it. this is just me noticing that the little holder stands up by itself so I didn't have to sit and hold it while it dried that took me what, what was that we're on the fourth item this is the golf club magic blue was the base cut by Vallejo bit of silver for the, the head of the golf club and then I'm going to use that night blue by Vallejo for the, the handle of this golf club then after that I'm going to use another wash just survivor shader all over the metal part and just making sure I get around the neck of the metal as well because that's how it looks in the artwork it's really dark there so I thought I'd add that in as well then I'm going to do a little bit of detail with the magic blue and try and paint that sort of stripe that wrap that goes around the handle that you can see in the artwork just going to really really carefully freehand that as best I can making that look realistic a bit more touching up with the claymore blade just bringing some of the the base color back where the wash sat where I didn't want it to and just some bits that have rubbed off while I was doing this and then this is the for some reason in the artwork this is the only one with any blood on it that's peculiar to me but you know I thought I'd keep with the artwork it makes it look a little bit more interesting so that's glistening blood the technical paint by by the army painter and I'm just splattering it in the corner as realistic as uh, I could do with the artwork and then gory red is going to be for the crowbar this is going to be nearly identical to that fire axe that I did just copying the artwork so I'm painting on some silver on the head and tail of the crowbar but then I'm just going to dry brush it over again just like I did with the fire axe so as I was saying played this game did enjoy it played it twice and I'm not a massive fan of solo games so that that's quite cool I always forget these tiny epic games are that just small factor really they're quite de in depth games i guess they're not massively they're not the biggest com most complicated games i've ever played but they're certainly i just forget i always sit down and think it's going to be a quick five ten minute game and like, oh no this is a real game with a small form factor so that always takes me by surprise but no i did i did i enjoyed it i'm going to be playing it some more so if you've not checked this game out i would recommend you give it give it a look at least go and check out um, some reviews online maybe watch a bit of gameplay but i'm looking forward to this playing with some friends if i had any here we're on to the crossbow and in the background i've just painted that a light gray specifically cold gray again just using that vallejo game color because it works as the primer and i don't know how you'd prime these with a spray can i think that'd be really really difficult but any sort of paint on primer would do if you want to do all of those or if you've got the game color range it does work as a primer the first coat you put on as well painted on some silver painted on the black this is a scorpino green the only one that's not translated that I complain about every time i use this color but that sort of matches the artwork that green in the artwork then again i'm going to use a survivor shader the black shader just to make those details really pop back out and then i'm going to go back along and highlight all of those base colors edge highlighting where i can painting in any of the colors that have sort of been lost with the wash just settling where i didn't want it to uh, just while I remember, it was mentioned by Nodlin, I believe, that he painted the previous game, uh, Tiny Epic Quest, and he's had trouble with the paint coming off. Now, he didn't mention if he used varnish, and I don't show the varnishing stage in this video, but I do varnish them all at the end in my own time. Uh, painted on the varnish, did it all manually, uh, choosing satin, matting, matting, satin, matting, and glossing satin matte and gloss varnishes where applicable so shiny bits i did in satin it sat in all gloss depending how shiny i wanted it and then flat bits i did very much in the matte to try and make so the baseball bat for instance would be matte but maybe a bit of satin on the um on the barbed wire the gun here that you're seeing for the gloss would possibly be, be a gloss on the the silver i think i actually did satin but matte on the the handle of the gun so that varies varies as i go along and just i mean if you if you're unsure just do them all satin it's a nice compromise between the two it's a little bit glossy but quite flat as well quite matte now so as i mentioned he said his paint came off through use he didn't mention if he varnished it definitely definitely if you're painting it varnish these they get quite a lot of use quite a lot of touching the paint will come off if they're not varnished and if you if you do notice the varnish, if you do notice the paint coming off, I would say touch them up straight away and then varnish them again. I, I'm because of N N Nodland's comment, I'm tempted to varnish them a second time because you know it's this isn't the most amount of work. It probably took me about an hour 
um, I had to wait for them to dry. So adding all the sitting, waiting for the drying time, it was probably like three or four hours. But painting, it was it was less than an hour, I'd say. So it's not too bad to have to redo some of it, but it'd be much better if it just didn't break. So maybe I'd spend a little bit of time doing a, a varnish or two varnishes, something like that. Let us know in the comments below if you've run into this problem and if it was because you didn't have varnish or if you've never run into this problem and you've varnished them really, really well. I've, As I've said, I've only played it twice. I wasn't particularly gentle with the pieces and none of the paints come off yet, but we shall see over time. So hopefully you've just been watching the colors going by in the background and keeping up with this. It's much the same. I'm just really showing you, you the, the list of colors will be in the description below as well if you're not keeping up. So all the colors are available there, what I use, but it won't be per weapon. So kind of have to watch them for, for that, unfortunately. But you basically just got to grab the colors if you need that. And if not, you just get to see what they all look like painted. And I will show you at the end all of them sort of in situ. You can see I'm building up the the meeples, the item meeples in the background. They're all slowly gaining these weapons and looking a little bit more fierce each time. So this is that Kickstarter exclusives katana. So I've gone for a, I was using Vallejo's silvers there. So that was that chainmail silver and their silver to bring some color to the blade. But then after that, I realized I didn't like it. So I just painted over the top with machine gun metal because I much prefer the army paint of silvers, unfortunately. But I used their Vallejos to begin with because of that primer aspect of the game color range. Then it was a black handle. Then I'm just painting in some white spots. And if you get the paint wet enough, it seeps into those details, the little dints. Then I'm using Claymore blade, just edge highlighting around the sword, all the way around the edge down the center raised parts, just making that look as realistic as I can for a little. So why is there no blood on that? There's blood on the golf club. Uh, I think, go, thinking back, and then I ran out of item meeples, but luckily I've got some other tiny epic games. So I just went and got some other meeples. That's what's happening there. But why is there no blood on the sword? I think a splatter of blood on that would make it a little bit more interesting, look a bit more fierce. Bringing in some more of the meeple family, just getting enough to carry on. And then for the guns, I you could say they're all slightly different but by this point I was tired of waiting for paints to dry and I wanted to go to bed so for all of my guns basically painted them the same that's tinny tin by Vallejo and then I'm just gonna sh so all, you're not gonna see all the other weapons but I've done them all the same all base coated tinny tin and then washed in that survivor shade the black wash and I'm going to dry brush over the top, machine gun metal, just catching that on all of the raised parts, just bringing some color back into that. And I'll have done the same with all of the, the guns, all of the machine guns and so. So an hour and 15 minutes did not include waiting for dry time. If you could paint them all simultaneously, batch paint them, it's going to be a little bit faster, a lot faster probably. You won't have to wait for any dry times. Now, Gameling Games do have a Kickstarter running at the moment. It's for their Tiny Epic Mechs. That looks pretty cool. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to go and check that out. And then lastly, if you are going to paint this, let me know in the comments below. I'd like to know what sort of people, which ones of you are going to be painting these teeny tiny weapons. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you next week.